Hey everybody, today we got some big news about uh, Xiaomi car in China. So the SU7 is launched, uh, electric sedan by Xiaomi and that's taken the industry, the automotive industry, the EV industry and we've been discussing it in my all member community, the patron community and a couple of people are asking me around my um, thoughts how this might actually also impact not only Neo but the entire industry and well here are a couple of thoughts that I can offer this is kind of um, yeah unstructured content I have to say I didn't uh, benchmark this car entirely yet so for example I haven't seen it in person I'll be in uh, in China in the next couple of weeks and I'll have a, a second look let's say um, at the car because sometimes these cars can be more shiny on paper and then uh, if you see them in real life they can be actually quite a bit worse but I also had the opposite case for example the Seeker which I couldn't touch for some time during the pandemic when I couldn't uh, enter China um, when I saw it in person I was quite um, yeah, surprised and uh, positively surprised uh, about the quality of Seeker cars and so on so um, I don't know which which way it's gonna go with Xiaomi but I think the big news of today is actually around the price so it comes in at uh, 210,000 RMB on the uh, you know the, the low part uh, for the minimum edition here uh, which I think is a uh, you know something we have to talk about now um, because to be frank like when I first saw it coming out like these have been some of the initial uh, you know online leaks and uh, comparing the car here to uh, Porsche uh, that's exactly uh, what I was looking at it was really looking very very similar to the Porsche Taycan and this in my head created the image also with some of the first videos that I've seen from uh, the Xiaomi car that it's gonna be high quality and in a premium to luxury segment and that would be the segment in which Neo is selling cars right so um, you know these have been my first impression and now we got to talk about this price because this price doesn't match the premium to luxury segment right um, this is a very very aggressive pricing here um, and we know with all that's going on in the EV industry currently um, there has been a price war and everybody is fighting for getting huge traction in terms of serving the mass market and given this type of pricing um, this car is serving the mass market in a way but only on the paper right on the pricing paper what I'm going to conclude in this video is and also how I think this car will be relating to um, Neo is that it's sharing one similarity with Neo and unfortunately that's not a good one um, because that's what it has in common with the ET5 I think this car despite its price it's actually targeting a very narrow um, target group and I, I remember when we saw the launch of the ET5 uh, many people had in mind like oh this is going to be a mass, the first mass market car in a way for NEO and it's going to compete with the Model 3 and so on and the the time when I first rented the Neo or subscribed to the Neo 85 in Germany and um, tested it out for a while, I noticed how special this car is. And special in a good and in a bad way, because special it's having some very special looks, and on and people are really noticing you. So it's it's an attention grabbing vehicle. And I think the same thing will be the case for this Xiaomi car, and that's a good thing right because you know people will want this attraction they are thinking this is a designerly car it's good looking well some people would argue it's not good looking others would say it's good looking um, I think if you are in the use that a Taycan is good looking then you would possibly also like the um, the uh, Xiaomi car here uh, but in the end this will be serving uh, just a tiny target group that likes to be different than the rest and so with that I think 
it will unfortunately suffer the same fate as the NEO ET5, which will be possibly a spike in orders, which we're seeing today confirmed. So um, Xiaomi is getting quite a few um, orders, I think up to 50,000 in the first couple of hours. And, you know, we always have to sort things out in the end. Uh, those orders may not, un um, unfortunately, may not in the end uh, convert into actual buyers, but could be in the case in the case of Xiaomi, um, because of course they are a big name, but in a way big, in the other way they are not big because Xiao actually means um, small or tiny and uh, so Xiaomi kind of translates into little rice corn uh, in a way if you will. So it's kind of this cute name and that doesn't really match with the car here in a, in a sense that you want to have a nice branding like the Porsche Taycan or maybe something what Neo has achieved with all of the new houses, the service level, uh, with the, the higher price points where people see a certain type of status if you are um, you know, driving a Porsche, if you're try, driving a Neo. With Xiaomi, with the name and now with the price tag, I'm not so sure about that to be honest, right? So um, yeah, the price itself will attract lots of buyers. I think that's why we see those orders coming in and why we, I think we will see a, uh, a spike. Um, and as I said, Xiaomi has the, the traction. They have lots of um, phone customers who will notice that they're now also doing a car. However, I think that might be one of the points why Xiaomi decided to ultimately go for a lower price uh, then a higher price and competing with the Taycan on this premium to luxury branding. Um, first of all, because I think they noticed that they will not be able to invest as much as, for example, Neo into brand building, which needs time and resources. Um, and they also don't have the legacy in terms of car, car buying uh, as a Porsche or some of the German brands. But um, ultimately, I think it also really comes down to the fact that Xiaomi phone buyers or Xiaomi product own uh, product buyers in general customers are generally not that affluent and well off, uh, despite the fact that they are usually have a tradition of very good design and nice product quality. Um, I think uh, Xiaomi oftentimes still competes on a price and uh, oftentimes doesn't even make money with the hardware they sell, but rather with the, the software and, and other services around. So I think they kept that in mind and ultimately, you know, kind of made another Me Too product, which we've seen with many um, other um, sedans that are coming out, like, um, uh, you know, here the Xiaomi here within the Jitsi, the S7 by uh, Saic uh, and uh, IO Motors, Xiaopong which Xiaopong actually, I think they might actually be hit a little bit more by this uh, Xiaomi car release because they are also really targeting those um, younger buyers that want to have something fancy, sporty to show, which I think the Xiaomi car really appeals to. But in the end, the Xiaomi car will even be um, a bit more outstanding, you know, a, a little tinier, more narrow target group even than the Xiaopong P7 in my point of view. Uh, so this one is still more mass market and more appealing to more customers, um, even than the, the ET5 in a way, uh, in my point of view, because the ET5 is also from the design even more out, outstanding and a narrow target group, uh, which is good and bad, as I mentioned before. So, you know, uh, with that, uh, we might see something similar to what we've seen with other uh, smartphone manufacturers entering the, the uh, EV space, which is a spike when it really comes out and then kind of a wane off and we'll see whether or not that can be sustainable. Ultimately, I think Xiaomi will be uh, the decision maker whether or not this will be a long lasting adventure here. Uh, so it will have some branding effect for Xiaomi as well. So it's kind of a pet project by Lei Jin, the, the founder. He, he's now also playing a role in the car industry. So it's it's techy, it's nerdy, right? So this, this car will also have some very um, nice uh, self-driving functionality. So I think on the tech side, this is a really interesting and nice car. It's also having a fridge. They have um, lots of displays in the car. So, you know, everything that you usually always see with each of the other models being introduced. Usually they have some, some sort of um, tick off the box, like some functionality, like how fast they're accelerating, how many displays they've got, everything like that. But ultimately, 
are they sustainable in the long run? I think that's where NEO is competing um, rather on something else, which is battery swapping as a unique selling proposition, um, their branding, which they invested lots of time and resources into, which Xiaomi today said, well, look, we're not gonna compete on that. We're just gonna go onto the pricing. Um, and so this was one of the memes created and sent out there on uh, X today. Uh, by Andrea, I think, um, who's also usually watching this channel, um, commenting, by, by the way, to explain this picture, this is Li Bin, this is Hu Xiaopong and um, Li Xiang, so the, the founders of Nio, uh, uh, Xiaopong and Li Auto, uh, they have been in the audience actually, which is quite telling as well. So, you know, they are not really seeing Xiaomi here as a big competitor that they are fighting to death. Uh, there is really some uh, friendship in here, uh, by the way, Xiaomi also playing a role in the early fundings and um, creation of NIO. So, you know, this is an intertwined industry and each of them have their separate ways of competing. Li Auto, as we know, is a gas guzzler. Um, their first EV seems to be unfortunately flopping a little bit. We'll see uh, undecided yet. Um, funnily, Expo might be fucked in a sense that um, it's really targeting most, uh, mostly Expo users there and Neo. I think if you compare the ET5, still is a little bit more of a pragmatic car. Uh, also, I need to mention here Tesla as well. Um, yeah, the Xiaomi car will be taking some sales initially from the ET5 from Expo, from from Tesla Model 3, but ultimately. I think, you know, it's the, the Neo 85 is more there to stay. It's more sustainable and uh, even more so the Tesla Model 3, which is an even more pragmatic car. You know, people who just want to blend into the masses, um, they can get a better bang for the buck with the Model 3 um, still. And they don't attract those looks that you don't necessarily want to have. If you want a more something for the family and so on, you don't get something which looks like a Porsche Taycan. This is a show off. This is for young people. And, you know, even with the steering wheel here, and these are really those <laughs> very much copied uh, Porsche attributes here with these no knobs that you will also find inside a Porsche. Um, it's very clear that this is a very specific narrow target group. And in that way, yeah, Interesting pricing today unveiled, something new, uh, putting yeah a bit more pressure on the EV industry, but I think in the long run, uh, we'll see whether or not Xiaomi is willing to build up, for example, uh, after sales infrastructure, a service industry, um, high, high sales stuff standards and stuff like that. All of that's gonna take lots of time. And in my point of view, Neo with swapping, having a new unique selling proposition is more pragmatic, even a little wider audience, but definitely um, it's a challenge to the ET5, but will cause a small dip, maybe take away a couple of sales, but in the long run, I think this will fade out and Neo will prevail on these matters. That's my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in my next videos.